back with a stunning Retina 5K display. So this is joining the existing lineup of the 21.5 inch and 27 inch iMacs which are carried over unchanged. Now for the most part the Retina iMac is identical to the existing non-Retina 27 inch iMac but it has a 5K display and upgraded internal specs. And before we get to the specs and what makes this display so stunning, let's get it out of the box so we can take a close look around. Now, if you order your iMac from Apple, it ships in a cushioned trapezoidal box identical in shape to the iMac's box. He even opens the same way, folding forward for easy accessibility so you don't have to strain to pull it out of the box. Now, once again, we have that distinctive tra trapezoidal box, which makes the packaging much more stable for transport. Now, the packaging has been updated with the artwork for OS X Yosemite, which just went public last week. Apple also makes this really easy to open once again, so all you have to do is slice the tape and, and let the front of the box open up, which reveals a styrofoam cocooned iMac. Now, tucked in the top is our accessory box containing our wireless Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. First up is the multi-touch magic mouse, which is carried over on unchanged. Now, of course, if you do a custom order, you could get a magic trackpad instead. Now, this comes pre-installed with non-rechargeable batteries, and the first thing we'll need to do here is to switch it on so the mouse is ready to pair to the iMac when it boots up for the first time. Next up is the Bluetooth keyboard, which is very familiar territory here with that aluminum unibody design and the chiclet style keyboard. Now, on either side, we'll find a power button as well as the battery compartment, which can be opened with a coin when it's time to replace the batteries. But once again, these come pre-installed with two double A's. We still have all of our familiar Apple keyboard functions at the top, such as controlling screen brightness, mission control, launcher, and media controls. Now below that, we'll find our literature packet, which includes a quick start guide, warranty information, Apple stickers, and an Apple branded microfiber cleaning cloth for that glass display. The quick start guide covers the basic setup and installation information, as well as highlighting some of its major software features on OS X Yosemite. Now it's probably best to do this on the floor instead of on the table like I'm doing here, but you can see our iMac is completely cushioned in styrofoam segments, which makes them easy to take apart. Now behind the packaging, we'll find our detached power cord just kind of hanging around, so we're gonna connect this later. Now the next thing I need to do is remove the styrofoam envelope protecting the iMac. Now to free it, just peel the tabs at the back of the iMac, free them from behind the stand and just pull up. Next up, we have lots of clear plastic covering the glass of the iMac and the user accessible RAM slots, which are thankfully still here. Next, we can start peeling the plastic off from the sides of the iMac so we can pull this off in one piece. Next up is the plastic covering the pedestal, and as you might have noticed, the hinge is still using a spring to help hold up the heavier 27-inch iMac. Now, the chassis of the iMac is again identical to the 27-inch design they debuted back in 2012. So same dimensions and all with that aluminum unibody design. We still have that razor thin 5 millimeter edge that curves toward the center to create the illusion of a super thin display while giving space for the components inside. The effect is still really attractive here. Now at the bottom once again we'll find the chin with the Apple logo. Now like before the chin houses the air vents and down facing stereo speaker grills. Which in this case are milled into the edge of the bell bezel and again that bezel is also razor thin. I've always really liked these speakers in the 27 inch iMac and I use them regularly thanks to the deep bass response and clear dynamic range. I'll have a sample later in this video so you can judge for yourself. Now on the top of the display we'll find a FaceTime HD camera along with an ambient light sensor and LED indicator. We'll also find a pair of dual microphones etched into the metal unibody at the top edge of the display and just below that on the back side of the iMac. Now behind the iMac on the top we'll find that glossy black plastic Apple logo that acts as an RF transparent window for Wi-Fi to pass through the metal chassis unaffected. And of course we're running 802.11ac in this computer. Now behind the pedestal's hinge you'll find the chassis exhaust vent, the RAM door, the power port, and a Kensington lock at the very bottom. Now on the back of the iMac we'll find all of the I.O. ports in one location, including an SDXE card slot, as well as a headphone jack, which also acts as an input for a microphone and also acts as an optical audio output as well with the right adapter. We also have four USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, and a gigabit ethernet port. Now on the opposite side we'll find that concaved power button so it's easy to feel for without having to see it. Now once again this 27 inch iMac has user upgradable RAM so we can pop off the back panel to install our own RAM sticks. Now, now concealed in the power port is a button to release that panel. You'll probably need need something to push on the button to release it since it's so recessed. Now the panel pops off and is only held on with anti-vibration friction fittings along the side. Now inside 
that panel, you actually see some instructions on how to remove and install your own RAM. First step is to release the RAM carriage, which pops up when you spread the clips apart. Now I'm removing the existing four gig RAM sticks and replacing them with eight gig sticks. So they'll bring me up to 32 gigs. And again, this is a lot cheaper than what Apple will charge. This is $270 for 32 gigs versus $600 for Apple's upgrade for 32 gigs. Now the installation is very easy. The slots are clearly defined and all you need to do is push them in firmly to seat them correctly. Once you're done with installation, we just need to push the carriage back down and reinstall the back panel. Now, if you want to buy your own RAM upgrade kit, I'll post a link in the description below. Now, our next step is to connect the power cable so we can power this on for the first time. Now, like my 2013 iMac, this iMac is the maxed out configuration, which gets me a Core i7 Haswell clocked at 4 GHz and an AMD Radeon R9 M295X with 4 gigs of GDD. DDR5 RAM. This GPU also has the more modern Tonga architecture compared to the older standard GPU. I've also opted for the 3 terabyte fusion drive, although a 1 terabyte fusion drive is standard and there are several SSD options up to 1 terabyte. So if you want the ultimate speed, pick an SSD, but I preferred storage. The fusion drive once again combines the speed of an SSD with the storage capacity of a hard disk drive, which intelligently loads frequently use content on the SSD for quicker access and read times. So OS 10 and the app load times are very quick. Now the big news here, however, is the display, which has a resolution of 5120 by 2880, which doubles the resolution of the old 27 inch iMac, which quadruples the number of pixels on the screen to 14.7 million. So we jump from 109 pixels per inch to 218 pixels per inch. Now like the old iMac, this is an IPS LCD display which is optically bonded to the glass. The glass itself has an anti-reflective coating, although it's still a glossy panel. The screen seems to be equally as bright and colorful as the non-Retina iMac, but the clarity is simply stunning on the Retina 5K display. So if you're familiar with other Apple Retina displays, the experience here is very similar, but on a much larger scale, which makes it even more stunning. Stunning. Now, if you visit the resolution options of the display, we can't select the native resolution. Instead, it scales the content for better clarity instead of more screen real estate. Although you can select from a few scaling options to get a little more space on your display. Now, unfortunately, the 5K iMac does not support target display mode like the non-retina iMac. So unfortunately, you can't use the iMac as a 5K external display for your Mac Pro or your MacBook. This is brought on by the limitations of Thunderbolt 2, which can't handle the resolution of 5K. This also explains why we did not get a 5K Thunderbolt display. Now, unfortunately, this will require updates to the Thunderbolt hardware, so no current Mac can support 5K externally. Now, you can connect an external display to the 5K iMac, such as a Thunderbolt display, or in my case, I'm using another iMac in target display mode, and it works seamlessly. It automatically scales scales the content as you drag and drop windows between the displays. Now the great thing about a 5K instead of a 4K display is that you can actually preview a full 4K video project in the video editor like Final Cut Pro while still having room for the UI. If you look at a non-Retina iMac side by side with a project set to actual fit, you can see the full project on the Retina iMac unlike the non-Retina which will have to scale it down significantly. Now the 4K video you're watching right now has been edited on the 5K iMac and it worked flawlessly with no signs of frame dropping. So I can scrub the timeline like uh, like you would with a non-Retina display and it works perfectly. Overall I'm really excited to finally have a display that allows me to fully preview and edit 4K while doing it flawlessly. So let's take a look at our benchmarking to get and an idea of the relative performance of our machine. First stop is Geekbench, which reveals a single core score of 4438 and a multi-core score of 16407. That's up fairly significantly from the non-Retina iMac, which scored 3969 on the single core and 14960 on the multi-core score. 